welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm Underhook and this is my review of the Russian Tier 8 medium tank, the T-44. So is it any good? No, I don't think it is. This tank was buffed, uh, I think maybe 12 months ago, maybe less, which is why I've decided to give it a go. I'd never driven it before, but I had heard it was a very bad tank. Uh, but then they buffed it, and I heard some people saying they thought it was pretty good. Uh, the new gun was good, they said, so I thought I'd give it a go. And I don't like it. Partly, I think it's because of the 357 Matchmaker. This thing, whenever I get in this tank, I think, where am I going to go on the map? Because it doesn't have anything that it's really good at. So, for example, if I'm in a, a Centurion, the Tier 8 British tank, I know I've got a really strong turret, so I'll go for a hill and just try and poke my turret over and, and shoot some people, and I'll do pretty well. If I've got something that's super stealthy, well, I'll go and find some bushes or something and try and flank people. If it's really fast, I'll try and ambush people and circle them. I'll, whatever. This tank doesn't have anything it's really good at, except it has pretty good armor for a tier 8 medium. And so when it's top tier, it does okay. When it's not top tier, it just doesn't do well. And with the 357 Matchmaker, you're almost never top tier, so it's a real disaster of a tank. If they do fix the matchmaking, which they temporarily did on the Australian server, and it looks like they might be going to put it back, then it'll be all right. I've, I had fun when, the, in the brief time, we didn't have 357 matchmaker. I actually enjoyed it. So I've got a gun rammer fitted and a gun lane drive fitted, obviously to speed up the loading times and the aiming time, and I also have uh, vents fitted to speed up the crew skills or improve the crew skills. My commander has six cents and is working on camouflage. I can't remember the rest, so I'll have to have a look. The gunner has snapshot and is working on concealment. The uh, driver has smooth ride and is working on concealment. And the um, this guy, radio operator, has situational awareness to improve our view range and also is working on concealment. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the setup of this tank. Um, let's have a look at the comparison. Then we'll have a look at the armor and then we'll get into some gameplay. All right, we're on the tank's GG website. And as you can see, our DPM is way better than all these other tanks I've selected, although the STA-1 is close to the Japanese tank. There are a lot of tier 8 medium tanks, a lot of them are premium as well, so this is only just a random selection I just picked of tanks that I thought were actually not bad tanks. And I picked the Chinese one up here because it's a very similar, has similar guns. Anyway. So it has really high DPM, and that's the new gun, the 100mm gun that it never used to have. They This is the one they, this was the buff, basically. It has 190mm of pen, which isn't great. It's the same as the Pershing, and it's a bit more than the Chinese one. The Chinese one looks like a dud, just looking at its guns. Uh, the others, though, like the Centurion, has great penetration. Um, but anyway, damage of 250 per round, though, is the same as the Chinese one, and is better than pretty much everyone else. And that's why the, where the DPM comes from, because it also has the equal best rate of fire of eight rounds a minute. As you can see here, the Pershing, the Pantera, and the T-34, the Chinese version, which also has 100 millimeter, uh, doesn't have as good a gun. So good rate of fire, reasonable damage, and uh, not so good pen, but okay. Caliber, 100 millimeters is better than most, so the chance of overmatching is better. The shell velocity of 880, though, is slow. Now, the T-34, the Chinese version, only is slightly faster at 900, and the STA-1 is only a little bit faster at 914, but the others are considerably faster. does make a difference when shooting moving tanks. So that's a bit slow, that, for a medium tank, but you get what you get. Plenty of ammo. Now, the aim time on this gun is pretty good at 2.1 seconds. In fact, it's equal best to the ones I'm showing here. The P-44 Pantera also has 2.1. The others are all sort of 2.3-ish, except for the T-34-2, which inexplicably has a 2.8 second aiming time on its 100 millimeter gun. Now the uh, dispersion rates for moving and firing are better than all these other tanks here and the gun elevation of 23 is good. The only thing that really suffers badly in this gun handling stats we can see here is its depression of 7 degrees. You can see that you know, 8 degrees for me is the minimum hill fighting depression that you need and well the only other one is that the Chinese one, which really looks like a dud. The others are all actually better, and others are all capable of fighting on a hill. This tank isn't. If this tank was capable of fighting on a hill, because it's reasonably strong turret, it probably would be a better tank. But So that's a real drawback on this tank. Forward speed of 51 looks faster than the others on paper, and it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not a lot faster than the others, though. And the, P the Pantera is faster, though, at 60. 
Reverse speed of 23 is really good though, better than the others, and so that is good at pulling back behind a rock or something quickly, which you probably will need to do in this tank. <laughs> the um, weight of the tank, well, it's 33 tons, it's actually not that heavy. In fact, it's the lightest of the ones we've got here, so not a good idea to ram in a T44 unless you, you know, don't have a choice. Terrain resistances, well, they're pretty good in this tank as well, so it does turn pretty well. It's got a turret traverse of 48, which is fantastic, best of the bunch here, and a track traverse of 44, which is also quite good. The Pantera is better and the T34 is better, but and it's the same as the STA, but the others are a bit less. So pretty pretty uh, agile, I guess. Hull armor-wise, well, it's got 90 millimeters at the front of the hull, that's upper and lower plate. We will have a look at the armor in more detail, and 190 in front of the turret. It's reasonable armor, and you can bounce some shots when you're top tier. Health is 1300, which is the equal lowest along with the T34, so it doesn't survive a lot of hits. View range of 380 is the equal worst, but you expect that on a Russian tank. They all have terrible view range. Radio range of 730 is quite acceptable, and the chance of catching fire from the engine is 12%. So, in theory, it doesn't catch fire much. Yeah. I think that's actually true, it doesn't catch fire much, I'm just looking at my notes. No, that's about right. Now, the thing is, that's with the 100mm gun, and I actually didn't like the 100mm gun, and didn't do very well with the 100mm gun. I guess because most of the time I was against tier 10s, I couldn't penetrate them anyway. But, let's have a look at it with the gun, that it, the old gun that it basically used to be its top gun was this 122mm. I'm going to update on, uh, on this tank as well, because this tank... The T-34 also has a 122mm available as well. So let's update both of those and go back. Did this one update? It did. So you can see the DPM on both these tanks drops way down. It's now the lowest DPM. And this is one of the reasons why people said this gun was awful and why they wanted a new gun for the buff. 175mm of penetration is awful, same as the Chinese one. Damage of 390 though is really good. This is sort of, I guess, tier 7 heavy tank damage, isn't it? 390, that's pretty good damage. Rate of fire is terrible at 3.95. It's 4 on the Chinese version. Reload time, uh, as you can see, is really bad. 122mm though does mean we can overmatch more often. The shell velocity drops even further now, down to 800. And uh, let's see, 3.2 second aim time. Well, it's a lot slower now, isn't it? But you expect that when you've got big alpha damage. 3.1 on the Chinese version. Dispersion goes out to 0.42. But to be honest with you, the 100 millimeter is terrible at long range. Uh, and this T44 isn't great at long range either, but I really couldn't tell much difference between the guns. Uh, except probably at long range, they're very similar. Probably at close-ish range, the T44 uh, suffers from accuracy, but at long range it doesn't seem to make any difference. Uh, the 0.48 on the T34, which is of course terrible. The uh, dispersion though, once again, pretty good on moving and firing. The gun depression though drops to 5 degrees, which is truly awful. So it really was considered a big buff, the 100mm, because it had 7 degrees of gun depression as well as much better gun handling. Um, so the rest of the tank of course stays the same. I've got to tell you though, I had much better games with this gun. Because when you do 390 damage, uh, they come around, they think, oh, hey, I'll just take you on, and you go bang, and they go, oops, and they back off. And most of the time, I'm shooting tanks in the side anyway. Even with the 190 millimeters of pen on the 100 mil, I'm, I'm not, I can't penetrate the front of most of the tanks anyway. So I have to shoot them in the side anyway. I might as well do 390 damage when I do it rather than 250. It seems to work. Works for me anyway. And now, still on Tanks GG website, having a quick look at the armor layout. Really like it when they have the same amount of armor on top and lower plates, so 90 millimeters all around means we pretty much know when we can and can't. So straight on, you're probably going to get pinned. It's around about 130 to 140 mils. But if you angle, you can get some really good 190s and stuff like that, and depending, we've got ricochet there. So it is very well sloped, this tank. The sides of the tank, they're only 75 millimeters, so you can't angle too much. A little bit more about that's about your maximum we're balancing out at about 160 on the front and side plates there ricochets towards the back uh, so yeah that's about the angle we, we want now the front of the turret is quite strong we've got 190 millimeters these red areas here but the mantlet is also 190 millimeters unfortunately it's not overlapping 
Uh, there are some sort of pokey little bits where it drops to like 90 just there. They're just small though. There's no real turret ring on this tank. So, and this bit underneath here where people might try and hit a turret ring is the 190 millimeter armor. So it really is quite strong there from the front. These side bits are 130 millimeters, but they're extremely well angled from the front. So really no one's gonna be penetrating those from the front. The cupola is only 100 millimeters. That is a little weak, but it is small. And if you keep moving, that probably can't hit it. Most people will try and get to your hull though because from frontally it's only 140 or so meters. But if you can angle a little bit about like that and do that, you'll probably be okay. But if they shoot the front corners here, your hull is still a bit too weak. So you can't really effectively side scrape in this tank. The rear of the tank is 45, the top deck here is 20, as is the front deck at the front is only uh, 20 millimeters as well, which is not good. But the top of the turret's a bit better at 35 mil. Uh, the rear of the turret is 100 mil, so the turret is quite strong. Unfortunately, just not enough gun depression to fully utilize that turret. The map is Sand River and it's tier 8s and tier 7s. I'm top tier. I'm using the 100 mm gun in this game. That is the gun that has uh, 190 mm of pen and 250 average damage. So I start, when I started playing this tank, I've played about 190 games in this tank. When I started playing it, it was pretty much just as the 357 matchmaker came in. <laughs> How's your luck, huh? And so it took me yeah, about 190 games to elite this tank. Uh, mainly because it took me so long because I was earning such bad uh, XP. Because I was in pretty much, you know, 80% of my games were tier 10. And uh, yeah, I uh, kept getting smashed. So my win rate was about 41%. Now, they recently changed the conditions on the Australian server and I was actually able, this guy ran up my back so I couldn't get a shot on this team. Anyway, he's still behind me, pushing me. Mate, just go. I tried to get out of his way and he still actually tries to stop me from, from having a shot at this tank. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the, um, the matchmaker um, was fixed on the Australian server temporarily, although, they put it back, but it looks like they might have fixed it again. Anyway, it's all up in the air at the moment. But so I managed to get some good games. When you are top tier, or even tiers, like if it's all tier 8s or tier 8s, tier 7s, this tank's pretty good because the armor actually holds up pretty well. And the 100mm gun, you can actually, uh, you know, survive okay with it. Artie getting me there. But once you get tier 9s and 10s, they do not care. and They just blast straight through the front of your turret straight through the front of your hull. Uh, you can angle, you can do whatever you want, but it makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, whereas when you're top tier, it does make a difference and it's worth doing it. Of course, the other thing is a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of tier 10 players just spam gold as well, which doesn't help. So, seven degrees of gun depression, it's not good for hill fighting, but in situations like this, it can still be okay. Although I did get smashed by that T25AT. Used to think that was a fantastic tank destroyer. I don't know if it still is anymore, but uh, it bounced off that uh, M1A1 there. These turrets are a little bit strong for us. Take the shot there, had a green indicator, I took the shot. It's probably on his roof or something, but we bounced anyway. Yeah, that T25AT, I loved that when I was grinding that, but that was a long time ago. Oh, he got another shot into me there. With the current matchmaker, it's probably uh, not so good anymore, I guess. And I missed. Now, this is what I said about when you're at long range, it really doesn't matter whether you've got the 100 mil or whether you've got the uh, 122 mil. They're both terrible at long range. So this, this gun is quite good at medium close range, but uh, terrible at long range. Whereas the 122 millimeter seems to be pretty much the same at long range. Not as good at close range. Pretty much the same at medium range too, but at close range, uh, the gun's awful. Uh, it seems to... It reminds me of the gun, if you ever use the old KV-1S when it was a T6 tank with the big... Well, with this gun, with a 122mm on it, you could actually drive up to a tank, put your gun against the tank, or have your gun passing through the tank, and still miss. Uh, this gun is like that at close range. Don't know why exactly, but it just is. 
how that went in, I don't know. I aimed at his front wheel. I was actually just trying to track him because I didn't think I could pen him, but it somehow went in. We've got an IS-3 coming. Luckily, it's not an IS-3A, but... Uh, and I can see that IS-6 is trying to make its way behind me, so I figure I'm going to have to do something with this IS-3. I actually also tried to put that my teammate behind me so I won't get shot in the back by the IS-6. But the IS-6 has paused for a second, so I decide it's time to run, because I, in this position, I cannot penetrate. I can't hit the roof of the IS-3. I can't pen him. So I'm going to try and go around and get his back, and because I've got a tank in front of him. And while I'm doing that, I might shoot the IS-6 in the back. Whoa! But then we see this guy sitting up there. Get a shot into him without stopping. Oh no, we're now in trouble. I forgot about the T25 AT. I thought he'd still be back there, but he's come up. We'll get him on the move. So we can see here that the 100mm is working well on the move. Seems to work okay on the move. Now, if we were in a tier sort of 10 game, I'd be dead already. Because they would have been doing a lot more damage to me. Alright, so you can see there the gun's doing really well in this game. Now, unfortunately, my teammate there has been killed now by the combined might of the IS-3 and the T-25. Because I was hoping to come around and get him their back and all that, but my plans went all wrong when I saw that M1A1 and the T-25 were both there. But we might be able to get a shot on the back now. I don't know if they're waiting for me or not. Or Oh no, he's running guys, he's running. You see my, my aim wobbling around there, it's because even though my ping is good, I still get a bit of lag and the gun drifts. So, um, when I say drifts, I, like, I move it and then the gun moves more than I move it and I have to pull it back. So I tend, you, you can see me wobbling around, that's what it is, it's just because of lag. So, he bounces off me, I bounce off him. As we saw when we looked at the armor layout, if you are very severely angled, the front of the tank is a ricochet. Now you can see there, you can actually see the mark on the front of my tank where he ricocheted on the upper plate. So I'm trying to see if I can get him from here with a bit of rock cover. There he is. IS-3. Let's see if we can trick him into uh, coming out to the open. I, I need to get fired down on his upper plate. Unfortunately, I just don't have the gun depression. So I, I was going to go there and shoot down him. I thought, well, I'm not even going to be able to shoot down on him unless I drive my whole tank over the ridge. I'm going to run. And uh, see if he decides to... Now, I'm guessing he thinks, oh, I'm going around to get his back. He's going to come down there. So I'm going to double back. And hopefully, when I get up here, he'll have actually turned around and be waiting for me to come around the bottom, and I'm going to shoot him in the back. <laughs> this is a very convoluted plan, and my tank's probably not fast enough to pull it off. I've only got five hit points, so if he even bumps into me, I'm dead. And he's not here, so I think our plan has worked. Will we get his back? Will we get a shot? That's his back. Oh, you're kidding me. You are kidding me. <laughs> My gun wobbled. <laughs> and I hit his track. We tracked him at least. Oh, he's on fire! Oh, well, that was worth it then. <laughs> he set him on fire. Uh, we can't get another shot into him. He's moved. Oh, that shot went into him. Oh. 7% health he's got left. Oh, well. Such is life. We've only got one tank remaining. So, oh, I didn't have it in the tank mode. We've only got one tank remaining, so it looks like uh, we've lost. All right, so that was a measly class three in the tank because we got smashed. Uh, let's have a look at the next screen. And we finish on top for our team. That's something. Uh, it's 3,300 and something damage. I think it's 3,368. And, uh, yeah. We fired 22 rounds. 19 of them hit, which is not too bad. Only 12 penetrated. Like I said, 190 penetration isn't great. And really the 175, yeah, you've got to hit them in the side anyway. Or in the back, like the IS-3 to really penetrate anyway. Um, 3,368 damage. Received 6 hits, 4. So we bounced a couple. And um, damage block 390, maybe we only burnt one then. Damage five tanks destroying two. We've got a thousand assistance damage as well, which is okay. Uh, the tank is, is it profitable? Take off that holiday bonus. And yeah, the tank is probably fairly profitable for a tier eight tank, considering we lost that game. 
All right, this time we're on cliff and we're top tier again, tier eights, tier sevens. Lucky us. So I'm not gonna show you anything where it's tier 10 because I just get smashed, basically. So this time though, we've got the 122 millimeter, 175 millimeters of pen, which is not very good, and 390 damage, which is very good. It's basically the same as the IS, tier seven Russian heavy tank. It's pretty much the same gun. So that gives you a bit of an idea, and you play it, I reckon, pretty much the same way. The thing is, this gun gives you a little bit more respect, and you'll probably see that in this game. But also, uh, people get surprised by it, because not many people, I don't think, use this gun anything more. I think most people use the uh, the 100 mil now, because of the high DPM. And in the hands of a good player, the 100 mil might be better. Now, we just bounced that shot off the T71DA. I'm probably going to wear one here, and I do before I get into cover. See if we can uh, give him a bit of payback here. Oh, really? I damaged his tracks with my 122mm shell. Thank you so much. <laughs> that light tank. Just, uh, yeah. Okay, well that was a bit of bad luck. But anyway, we'll continue on here. So there's the T71D. I'm going to see if I can get a shot into him here. He starts backing up, so I take the shot, and we actually do hit him, but we ricochet off the front of his tank. It's got pretty good angles in the front there. You would, I wonder what the armor is on that tank, though, because that was a 122mm shell, and we didn't overmatch him, so it must have reasonable armor on the front of it, that T71. I'll have to check that armor out. Anyway, he put one into me, though, so he's got no problems getting through my armor. <laughs> So I'm using these rocks here. They've put a bit more cover in here now. Now I can see this Carnarvon is coming around to get me. I'm going to start backing up because his turret's probably not bad. I don't want him to We get one into him and he gets one into me. So he gets 300 damage. He's a heavy tank. I think the Carnarvon's a heavy tank. Yeah, it is. Tier 8 heavy or tier 7 heavy? It's tier 8 heavy. So he gets one into us. Uh, but we get one into him. Now he does 300 to us, but we do about 390 or whatever we did to him. So he's probably going, ugh. Now I can see this T-43 here moving up, so together now we're going to take this guy on. His gun's pointing at him, he comes back, has another shot at me, I put a big one into him for 390 and our friend in the T-43 there finishes him off. So a bit of teamwork there, if I had it been on my own I probably would have been in a lot more trouble. Now I did wear two shots from the Carnarvon, but uh, it was kind of nice to get rid of it. Now, Thinking about taking a shot on this guy, and I take the shot. See there, the gun depression just really let us down. I couldn't get it. I didn't want to come too far over because I can see those other two tanks a bit further back there, and they could have all been aiming because I was spotted. So, uh, yeah, but now I can see my friend the T43 is going for it here. I decided to give him some backup because I don't want him to die. So I risk taking hit here, and I thought it was the back of the tank, so I aimed at it, but we had an orange indicator, and we actually bounced off the front. So you can see there. That P43, uh, which is a, what a tier, it's a tier seven medium tank. We just bounced off the front. That front of that tank was pretty much straight on, and we bounced off his armor. So the 175 mil does let you down sometimes. However, when he came there to finish us off, you'll notice we did 350 something damage to him, and that killed him. I'm pretty sure he thought, "Huh, oh, I'm an Italian uh, three shot auto loader. I got three shots." That guy there's got a 250 average damage gun. I've got 350 hit points. I'll just drive up to him and unload and I'll take the hit. But he couldn't take the hit <laughs> because it was <laughs> the 122 millimeter and we smashed him. So I think that's where this gun can come in handy, having the big damage. So I was really worried that that scout tank um, back there was going to get us. Now we hit that guy, I think we actually set him on fire, but it looks like he's got an automatic extinguisher, that 45 TP there. Unfortunately, we already killed him. The enemy T-43 is coming out into the open, that's a big mistake. Ah, uh, he's gone behind a building. See if he goes through, he's coming back. Nice, now you can see here what I said, the accuracy on this gun is not bad. You know, it's not bad. It's got a longer aim time, but the accuracy is pretty good. It, like I said, it really is only when they're really close to you that it seems to stuff up. But this sort of range here, you can see the reticle aiming right in. Fine. 
Admittedly, this guy does not know what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know. What's he doing now? I think he's just given up. I oh, know. Here he goes. He's moving. Was that a bot, folks? That had to be a bot, didn't it? I don't know. I mean, it makes me feel better if it's not a bot, because, you know, it makes me feel like I'm a better player, but I've got a feeling he had to be a bot. If you're not a bot and you're watching this video and you weren't a bot, I apologise. Great play! <laughs> okay, it wasn't very good. I decided it's time to move on. I was a bit worried about some more tanks, tank destroyers being at the back there and spotting someone, spotting me and getting punished coming down here, but it appears that my tanks are up there and there's nobody up there, so let's uh, see if we can get this sneaky bulldog. He did get a shot into me before with HE, which really annoyed me. Oh! What's that? It's the T25. Oh, we get a shot in. Oh, no. Oh, we angle at the last minute. Bit of zigzagging there. And he bounced off the front of our tank. How good was that? So, this is where being topped here pays off. We would have been in big trouble then because he's got a good gun. And managed to survive. Can we get this Oni? He is waiting for us. He shoots but misses. Didn't have time to fully aim. And we managed to finish him off. Yay, us! I see the artillery over there has been spotted. I've decided since I'm up here, I might as well get a shot on him. But somehow he hits me. So I don't know whether that was just a lucky guess, or whether he aimed it where I was, it missed, and then and so hit me, or whether he somehow saw me. I don't know. But anyway, either way, uh, I can't shoot him. I think he's behind that rock. Uh, so I, I, I don't know how he shot over the rock in a GW Tiger P because the arc isn't that great on the Tiger P. But anyway, I fired a shot just to see and yeah, no, he's back there. So I probably stuffed up the end of the game there. I should have got more involved. Shouldn't have bothered with the arty. Such is life. That turned out to be a class 1 game in the tank. I never did get mastery in this tank. Although, strangely, uh, I managed to get a mark of excellence. which, But uh, my win rate has come up to about 45 46% since they changed the matchmaker. I was down at 41% before that. So, not a great tank in my opinion. Anyway, class 1 for that game. We What did we do? Finished on top again for the team. We did 3,351 damage this time. 1141 XP, raw XP, which seems to be a class one in the tank. So, you know, people must be doing okay. Well, good players are probably doing okay because uh, you need a bit of XP to get mastery, but not so good players uh, obviously aren't doing well because if I got a mark of excellence with a 41 or 45% win rate, then yeah. Shots fired 15, 11 of them hit 9, penetrated. Uh, hits received seven, penetrations four. So we managed to you know, stop three of those shots. So the armor is okay at this uh, when you're topped here. Vigil spotted two, damage seven, destroying three, a little bit of assistance damage as well. And once again, the tank looks reasonably profitable, although we had 22 grand in holiday ops bonus. So we took that out. We made about, uh, what, 30 profit. But we did uh, get our tank pretty smashed up. There you go. Thanks for watching my review of the T44. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more reviews, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ and have fun.